Hey guys, I'm Sage Valentine and I'm back here to review another episode of CBS's Celebrity Big Brother Season 2. This review video is all about episode number 10, so let's just get down to it. So, Kato was evicted. I was not surprised. Because for the most part, Kato and Tom used to bounce information off of one another, but it seemed like Kato had the bigger ideas, so Kato was considered by his fellow house guests to be the brains of the operation between him and Tom. Now, I realized that Tom has some good ideas, but he went along with Cato because they were in an alliance. Now, without Cato, Tom is seen as weak. But that assessment is incorrect because Tom once again won the HOH, so Tom is truly a competitor. And... To count him out is a foolish move. And before I really get into this review, the one thing I wanted to say was that it makes me laugh when players come on Big Brother and they start complaining about people lying. You can always tell who really doesn't watch this show as much as they say they do, because that's all people do. Have we heard Tamar say anything about people lying to the point where she's surprised that they're doing this in the game? No, because this is what people do in Big Brother. Speaking of Tamar, Tamar is happy that she got her target out. But while she's sitting in the diary room, she is happy, but she lets us know that she needs to rein in her celebration because when it comes to Big Brother, you can't become too confident. Tom feels lost without Kato, and Candy notices this, which is why she decides to go to Tom and try to work with Tom. She says that she needs to bring him on her side so she can take out either Lolo, Natalie, or Ricky. Then we see Ricky and Lolo having a chat, and Lolo basically says if she wins HOH, she would put up Tom and Candy. Candy and Dina are having a chat, and they said if they win HOH, they would put up one girl and another girl, i.e. Natalie and Lolo. So Candy asked Tom, well, who would you put up if you won HOH? And Tom is still kind of sad, still down, and he says, well, I don't think I'm going to win HOH. Candy kind of pshaws that, and she's like, listen, you're going to win, and if you win you need to put out the athletes in the house. Now, Tom is skeptical about Candy, and he has every right to be because, like, I believe it was, I think he's the person who said it. In the Big Brother house, the game is geared to make people not trust one another and become rather paranoid. But on the same tip, Tom is willing to work with Candy if things pan out and he feels that he can trust her. And as we saw later on in the episode, he can trust her. So we get down to the HOH competition, which is the Celebrity Tumbling Dice competition. All right, so the host of this competition is none other than Lady O, a.k.a. Amorosa. She looked amazing, by the way. Her hair, her makeup, she seemed calm, and she was being nice. I'm sitting back wondering, is there a game show or a hosting gig in her future or something? Because she's rather, like, subdued and calm and cool, and I'm here for it, honestly. So anyway, it was pretty funny watching everyone perform in this competition, but Dina, her performance was the funniest because poor thing was struggling. Tom won the HOH in the end. I'm not even surprised because he did well in this competition. As I said before, players in this game do themselves a disservice if they count Tom out as a good competitor because he is. Now, Ricky, Lolo, and Natalie are worried and obviously they should be. Tom says this time... During this HOH reign, he's going to be very careful about his nominations. Natalie says she believes in miracles, and Tom winning HOH was the worst case scenario. Candy is so excited that Tom won. Natalie is her target. Candy hopes that 
by telling him that Natalie is her target. This is the way I interpreted what she said. She hopes that this will show that she meant what she said and she wants to work with Tom. Now, Natalie knows that she's going to be nominated. She has a sixth sense about it. Lolo says that Dina and Candy have no blood on their hands. Tom has to get the people who have a lot of blood on their hands out of the house, i.e. Natalie, Ricky, Lolo, and Tamar. And if you see the cat in the background, that's Hannah. Ignore Hannah. Dina is talking to Tom. And she says that Ricky, Tamar, Natalie, and Lolo are freaking out. And she kind of reveals to Tom that Tamar is working with them, so to speak. But really, Tamar is not working with them because Natalie, Lolo, and Ricky, for those of you who don't have the feeds, have their own alliance. And they kind of put Tamar in there. But really, Tamar's at the bottom and she knows she's at the bottom. So Dina tells Tom, you have to be like Ryan. You just have to nominate this person and nominate that one. Boom, boom. But Tom doesn't want to make a mistake, and I don't blame him. Dina tells Tom that she and Candy would put up Lolo and Natalie if they were the ones who won HOH. Tom sees Dina, the real Dina in this game, the strategist. Quiet as it's kept... I've been kind of side-eyeing Dina a bit as well because I cannot see her as being someone who is just, I don't know, lazy and, uh, um, what's the word, a floater, whatever you want to call it. I always believed she was sitting back and waiting for something. And right now she's revealing herself in a major way to Tom. So Tom realizes that he's going to need Dina and Candy's votes and their help moving forward. Well, Natalie, and I believe it's Natalie, Lolo, and Tamar, and I don't remember if Ricky's in the room. Anyway, they're all having a conversation, and they talk about how Tom has no chance against Candy and Dina. Natalie is upset because Candy chose to go against her in the competition and not Tom. And the competition I'm talking about is the HOH. But obviously, Candy's going to go against Natalie because Tom is taller and can move faster. S Natalie is around the same height as Candy. So Tom has this idea to n basically sit down and have a conversation, an interview of sorts, with uh, every house guest. And Big Brother shows us his interviews with Natalie, Lolo, and Ricky. Now, as far as his interview with Natalie, he lies and says to her that he won't put her on the block. Unless the veto is used, and if so, then he's going to put her on the block in the place of the veto holder, whoever the veto holder removes. But the other person on the block is the target. Tom tells Lolo that he wants to use her as a pawn. He brings up the idea. She's not happy about that. She becomes emotional about it. She becomes very, like, upset and starts crying. Tom's target is still Ricky, and it remains Ricky. And Tom says he has to get Ricky out of the house before Ricky gets him, obviously. Tom lied and said that he doesn't want Ricky to leave this week. Ricky said he's not an idiot and he tells Tom that if Tom does not nominate Natalie, Lolo, or himself, Ricky, then Tom will be safe during the next HOH. Tom doesn't trust him and he's smart too. Really the reason why Tom did these interviews was because he wanted to negotiate with the house guests. So just in case one of them won HOH, they wouldn't put him up. The thing about Natalie and Lolo and Ricky is that they were still going to put him up if he hadn't won HOH or not. They want Tom out of the house. So it's 2.27 in the morning and we get a segment of Tom acting like a pterodactyl. Tom's so silly. So Natalie says that Tom will put up one of their four. Now she acknowledges Tamar. It's funny, whenever Natalie acknowledges Tamar, it's a way 
to control her. It's a way to, you know, threaten her. So whenever Tamar says in this game that she's being threatened, and I think she said it this week in regards to Tom, I think that probably also comes from the fact that every time, like, Lolo and Natalie kind of talk to her, they kind of threaten her a little bit. I don't know if Ricky does it, but I know Lolo and Natalie kind of do a little bit. But anyway, Natalie tries to throw candy under the bus to Tamar while she and Tamar are sitting in the little, um, the tiny room where everybody strategizes. I think they call it the parlor room or whatever. All of a sudden, Candy comes into the room. Natalie makes up some excuse about it being too cold and she leaves. Candy's confused. And Tamar tries to tell Candy, listen, they, meaning Ricky, Lolo, and Natalie saved you from going home last week. And Candy's like, no, 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 you saved me. They didn't save me. And she's just like, they're mad at Tom because one of them is going to go home like this is the game. And I'm here with Candy on that. Like, if you don't win HOH, more than likely, you're going to go home. If you don't win Veto and you're on the block, you're really going to go home. And even if you're not on the block, you have a chance of going home in case somebody uses the Veto to save one of the nominees. It just is what it is. But Tamar trusts Candy. And... She and Candy agree that if one of them, meaning Lolo, Natalie, or Ricky, goes, then Tamar and Candy have a huge chance to make it to the end. So clearly Tamar and Candy have an alliance together. And they're smart to make an alliance because that alliance of four has an alliance of three, which has an alliance of two, and there might be another alliance in that three. So they're right to do that. So anyway, Tom tells Candy that he's thinking about putting up Ricky and Natalie. Candy says that Ricky and Natalie need to go on the block together. Because at first, Tom was a little bit iffy about doing it. But Candy's like, nah, they both need to go right now on the block. Not tomorrow, right now on the block. But Tom said he's afraid that Natalie is coming for him. And Candy's like, I believe that she's lying to you, Tom. In other words, she's being manipulative. And that Tom is not her target. So Candy asked Tom to trust her. And Tom is like, I should have talked to you first before I even made a final decision. And I'm like, yeah, you should have talked to Candy because... Candy was on both sides. She heard everything. She hears a lot. So she has a lot of information. So her social game is like up here. So in the end, Tom nominated Ricky and Natalie. He said that they both are incredible athletes, great competitors, and he believes that they both are targeting him. He hit the nail on the head. Really, Tom said that he, Natalie, Ricky, and Lolo and Cato were in an alliance full of lies. And that's why he's targeting them both. <clears throat> Ricky said he's not surprised that he's on the block, but he will go down fighting. Natalie said that Tom is a massive liar. Yeah, this is Big Brother. That's all people do is lie on this game. Lolo wishes that Tom would cut the BS. And she said if she wins the power of veto, she's going to use it on either Natalie or Ricky. Now, I know who won the veto. I'm not going to spoil that for you. I'm just going to wait until you guys watch episode 11 so you can see. This double eviction episode is going to be a good one. And I'm looking forward to it. And this review will be on time because I'll be watching it live because there's really nothing I watch on Fridays. So it is what it is. I'm Sage Valentine. I truly love you all. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to leave me some comments and let me know what you think about tonight's episode. What you think about Big Brother's scheduling for this season. Because for next season, it needs to go back to being in the fall. Because this winter thing is like strange. What with the uh, Super Bowl and with the um, Grammys. It's all just weird and football and everything. Are they playing football? 
well, whatever they have on CBS going right now. The scheduling's a little bit weird. But anyway, obviously you hear the kitty cats meowing, so I have to um, sign up. But I love you guys. Take care, and I'll be back tomorrow to review episode number 11. So see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Love you all. Bye. Man, this season's crazy. Bye, guys. Bye.